Hi everyone, it's Cynthia Deeran here. I am super excited to let you know that throughout the month of March, to coincide with International Women's Day, we're launching the Girls Go Global campaign. And we're going to be awarding a full scholarship to the International Business Accelerator to one lucky female entrepreneur. I created the IBA to help micro to medium-sized businesses to speed up and de-risk the process of taking a company international. And along the way, I've realized that there are not very many women on the international business scene, given the number of companies that are out there. And I don't think that's right. So I'm on a mission to change it. What we're going to be doing is awarding one female business owner a full scholarship to the program to give her all the tools she needs to make her business an international success. We'll also follow her journey and let you know how she goes. To celebrate the competition and to help spread the word, I'll be interviewing a very successful female entrepreneur every week throughout the month of March on the Business Beyond Borders podcast. My guests will be sharing their insights about the highs and lows of taking a business international and we'll be talking about the challenges that they faced that their male counterparts didn't have to deal with. We'll also be talking about where they get their inspiration from and their top tips for success. The International Business Accelerator is a digital program, so it and the scholarships are open to anyone anywhere in the world. Although if you are applying for a scholarship, I would suggest that it's probably better if you are a woman. If you're a female founder or you know someone who fits the bill, uh, please visit our website to find out more and put your application in. Just go to internationalbusinessaccelerator.com forward slash girls dash go dash global. My guest today is Jane Jackson, a career coach and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Navigating Career Crossroads. She's also the host of the Your Career podcast on iTunes, which was nominated one of the top career podcasts in 2017. Jane is originally from Hong Kong, but she runs her business from Sydney these days. Over the past 18 years, she has coached more than 1,000 professionals across Australia and Asia to help them develop their careers. Jane, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks so much, Cynthia. It's lovely to be here. You're originally from Hong Kong. I'm just wondering, growing up, did you think that you'd be working with clients from all around the world one day? Oh, I, I really don't think so. My high school days, I was in Hong Kong at a British school. And then my university, um, I took in the US in Minnesota. And I always thought that when I finished school, I finished studying, I'd go back home to Hong Kong, and I'd work there. Uh, the thought of working internationally wasn't really even on my radar. Okay. And yet these days, you're a careers coach with a business in Sydney, Australia, which has clients all across Asia. And you've been running that business since 2001. So tell me about how you got from high school and thinking that you would just go home and do something at home to where you are today. Yeah, I know. It was such a big jump. Mind you, I've been around for so long, Cynthia, that I've had lots of multiple career transitions. But perhaps if I, I kind of just briefly go over uh, the journey. When I graduated, I started working in Hong Kong in public relations originally, and I really enjoyed that. And PR in Hong Kong in those early days was so much fun. And I just thought, you know, Hong Kong's the pearl of the Orient. It was just, I felt like the world was my oyster just being there. But then I had the opportunity to move to San Francisco. And I was there for about a year. And unfortunately, it's really hard to get a green card and to be able to work in the US. So, so I was I was just getting into fitness. So I decided that I really enjoyed my uh, getting fit and running and doing aerobics and all sorts of things, because that, that was a fun thing then but then I moved to the UK and that's where I resumed my career again after a year working in public relations but not agency side I worked client side and then from there in the UK I got heavily into everything to do with the corporate world and some training induction courses within PR and I enjoyed that and I was still very much in contact with all of the people that I knew and I worked with back in Hong Kong and back in those days you know writing letters and and you know making international phone calls. Uh, the phone calls were quite expensive. So I felt quite cut off. It's not like today where social media and Skype and Zoom is just so easy. But um, I thought, okay, well, now I'm in the UK, I'll stay there. However, 
um, the, the career progressed. I, I got married and I had children and I did a little bit of a pivot within my career. So I moved out of PR and I thought, what can I do that would be part time that would be good for a little baby as well? So I could manage my time. And I got into because I was so heavily into fitness, running marathons, doing aerobics. I became a fitness instructor. Now, this is a long time ago, Cynthia, a long yeah. time ago. And as a fitness instructor, I really enjoyed it. I became very, very fit. It was a wonderful way to be able to train others and keep fit myself while balancing the needs of, you know, being a mum and having, having a young child. And during that time, I had the opportunity to move back to Singapore because my husband, he was transferred to Singapore. And I thought, oh, well, this will be interesting. So we moved over to Singapore and I carried on with my part-time fitness work. But I realized, oh my goodness, I've got my Hong Kong uh, work connections and friends. I've got my UK work connection and friends. And I've got my Singapore now work connection and friends as well. And suddenly the world didn't seem such a big place. Now, the career uh, progressed, so I got heavily into fitness and I ended up being in um, fitness championships and I got sponsored by Nike for a number of years. And so uh, that that career uh, transitioned from being a fitness instructor to teaching the teachers and in, in a roundabout way, it gave me an opportunity to go into corporate training. So leveraging my public relations experience, the international experience, the fitness and training experience, I became a corporate trainer. Okay, so that, that's just a quick journey. And then now, becoming a corporate trainer, I started conducting workshops, and I was given the opportunity also to coach. So I started coaching. And that was fine. That was just in Singapore. I didn't think of anything international at the time. But then I moved to Sydney. And over the years, technology has changed. And I found that I was getting uh, corporates contacting me in Singapore while I was in Sydney to go over back to Singapore to continue to conduct training workshops. So I was flying back and forth. And that was great. But then I thought, you know, all this flying is all well and good and some people really enjoy it, but I actually quite like staying in one place. And because technology has advanced so much, I thought, how could I actually leverage technology to turn this into a business where I can still work with people overseas and still provide a really good service? And so that's what I've done now. I've restructured my business completely. Um, I work globally with my clients and I don't do the fitness training anymore. It's all career coaching and leadership coaching. And I still conduct workshops, but a lot of the workshops are done remotely. So basically, that's me in a nutshell, Cynthia. And when you first started telling your overseas clients who you'd been traveling to meet that you were going to start providing workshops and services for them remotely, Did they welcome that or did did you find that at the beginning they hesitated? Oh, there was a lot of hesitation because they thought, how is it going to work, Jane, if you're not physically here? Because they like the face-to-face. And I like the face-to-face as well. But sometimes it's it's just not possible. You know, crossing time zones, it does get quite exhausting. Um, And so I said... For, for one of them, I said, let me do this. Uh, and it was actually a career coach certification program, which was uh, you know, over a number of days face to face. And I said, let me restructure this program and turn it into an online, but still face to face. So we would uh, set up a webinars like via Zoom and uh, the, the people who would be within the workshops, they would be in one room together. They could look on the screen, which was projected up onto um, the screen and they'd see my face. I'd still be there. They'd be looking at me and I'd be able to see all of them in the classroom. So it was like a virtual classroom. And we did one pilot um, program to see how it worked. And they loved it mainly because they didn't need to pay for me to fly and the hotels and all of the expenses um, that are involved with all of that travel. I was happy because I didn't get jet lag and I was able to conduct a, a quality service, but remotely and not having to to fly back and forth, I was able to get on with the rest of my work and my other clients. Um, It was very time and cost effective for for the client and very time effective for me. And what I love there is that you have essentially worked out what it is that you want uh, in terms of serving international clients and what works for you. And you flipped a traditional business model to suit yourself and you've managed to grow an international business at the same time. And I think that is 
that's very, very impressive. Uh, what, when you think about the business and the way that it's grown since 2001, what do you think has been the most significant factor in making Jane Jackson Coach internationally successful? Mm, okay. I think it's been the ease of social media and technology. Technology has been incredible. And I've tried lots of different technologies to see what would work best for me. And I've experimented with different ways of doing it. And now, I mean, we're, we're speaking today over Zoom. And I've actually found that Zoom meetings and Zoom webinars are, are the best. And they're the most stable, um, especially with you know different internet connections. It's a really good sound. It works well. We don't drop out. So, so so, so having Zoom work so well has been a boon for me. That's been fabulous. Social yeah. media certainly has made a big difference because leveraging platforms such as LinkedIn and Facebook, I'm on the other social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter as well. But for business, LinkedIn and Facebook, the face my Facebook business page, um, which which I have, it, it's called Jane Career Coach on Facebook. But I've linked a group to it called the Kickstart Your Career Accountability Group. And what's amazing is is that within this group that's linked to the the Facebook business page, I have people who are gaining support from me and accountability support as well as career advice, etc. And they're in the US, they're in the UK, they're in Europe, they're in Singapore, Hong Kong, and Sydney. And and it's all online. Yeah, that is quite incredible. When you think about your international clients, is there something in particular that you like about working with international clients? I mean, putting it another way, well, you know, how come you didn't decide to just stay home and, and consult for people in Sydney? Mm. I think I like the variety because you, growing up in, in Hong Kong, I'm half Chinese, I'm half English. And growing up in Hong Kong, it really is a melting pot of cultures there. And all of the friends from when I was very young, they were Japanese and Ghanaian and Korean and English and German. And so, you know, there was such, such, such a variety of people that I never really thought of there being any differences between us, I just kind of absorbed their culture a little bit. And so yeah. I have an innate understanding across quite a number of cultures, not all of the cultures, it's just the ones that I've been exposed to, uh, not only in high school, but also when I was at university, because there were so many foreign students. And I, I love the, the diversity. And I love being able to um, find out how someone else ticks, because if it's just my way, and being Eurasian, I've got a certain way of thinking, if I can learn how uh, the different cultures, what, what really um, makes them feel motivated or appreciated or um, uh, certainly heard and just increasing the, um, the understanding across cultures, I love that. But certainly the variety is one of the, the big draw cards for me. Now, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's not easy, Cynthia. It's not easy. But, but it, you know what it is? I think because I'm a coach and a career coach, and what you do as a coach is you listen a lot. And mm. so I tend to listen. I'm talking an awful lot today, but I tend to listen more than I talk. And, you know, people say, you know, treat people the way that you would like to be treated. Well, I say, no, treat people the way that they would like to be treated. And in order to yes. do that, you have to understand the different cultures. And that's what I try to do. And so um, if, if you're very respectful and understanding and you listen, it's not that hard to understand someone else's culture. As long as you don't judge, all you do is you accept that's what works for them. Yeah. I'm working with you. Let's make this work. And I will treat you the way that you want to be treated because you're my client. I think that's a fantastic point. When you think back over the 17 years that you've run Jane Jackson Coach and all that accumulated experience and expertise that you've gathered along the way, looking back, what do you wish that you'd known when you started out working with your international clients? Hmm, what would I have liked to have known? Um, I can't really think. I think... I would have wished that I probably had known a bit more about um, technology mm -hmm. because I was a, it sounds like I'm an early adopter. I wasn't, I'm a slower adopter. Uh, I, I wish that I had adopted technology a little bit earlier because I would have grown my business um, a lot sooner. Um, I think 
one of the things I would have, you know, wished that I had was a mentor in the early days, because I tend to teach myself an awful lot and I learn along the way. And that way it takes a lot longer. I would have got to where I am a lot faster if I had a mentor, because I realize now, especially when I'm mentoring others, that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't have to be the latest, newest, most clever thing that, that someone has invented. It, it's, you know, look, this works. If it, if it works, you know, obviously don't fix it, uh, but then just make it a little bit better. Um, and that's what I do now because I learn so much every single day and I have a number of mentors that I go to, to, you know, tap into their expertise as well. And it doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you, you keep learning and um, keep being open to new ways of doing things, I think you'll be successful. Is there anybody who has been a particular inspiration for you in, in this area of international business that you've gone into? Mm, you know, I, I, I'm thinking just it pops into my head because I, I podcast as you do, and I've got your career podcast uh, where I interview lots of fascinating professionals who've made amazing career changes. And I was inspired to do this because I've reached out to so many people internationally as a result of my podcast. But the person who inspired me to do this was a gentleman called John Lee Dumas, who's in uh, California in the US. And he must be one of the most successful podcasters in the world. Um, he's grown this incredible business and um, is really humble and just such a nice fellow. And he was so huge. And I thought, you know, I'd really like to interview him on my podcast. I wonder if I could. He's so big. Um, <laughs> so I, I reached out to him, stalked him a bit on Twitter and, and all the social media platforms. And that's why, you know, internationally, social media is amazing. And um, then I just reached out to him, sent him an email, and um, he responded. And I asked if he would like to be interviewed on my podcast. And he said yes. And wow. talking to him, and and listening to his career journey and his story, that's what really inspired me because it made me realize that, you know what, it doesn't matter how difficult something is. If you are open to new ideas, you can actually start something too. And because of this podcasting, I realized if, if with, with my podcast, listening to his originally, if I reach out to people and interview them and find out about how they did it and how they made a career change, because my focus is on people making career changes, maybe changing industries or changing job functions or finding a new job and talking about the challenges of transition, then that will help other people too. So John Lee Dumas certainly inspired me to create a podcast that will help other people the way his has helped me. Now, Jane, you're the, the first woman uh, to be a guest on the Business Beyond Borders podcast, and I'm Ooh. really excited about that. <laughs> Very brave, Cynthia. But probably, I'm just thinking my international business is not like probably the, the usual international businesses that you think about when someone says, you know, those words, international business. You tend to think of maybe manufacturing overseas and bringing products back in or, or something that's a lot larger. For me, I'm just a solopreneur. I run my own coaching practice but it's international because I can just reach people globally because of technology. So it's really, it's, it's just a, a small coaching practice that I run, but I can reach a lot of people. Oh, but that's exactly why I was so keen to have you come on the show because a lot of people think, oh, I would never be able to have an international business. I would never be able to operate in international markets. Uh, your story illustrates very, very well that you can, and it does not have to be a super, super complicated thing. But I'm pretty sure that by expanding your reach beyond Australia, you have enlarged both the number of people you can reach, uh, the variety of clients you can work with, which is good for you, and probably the caliber of clients that you can work with. Do you think that's mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. It, it's, I, I love it because whenever anyone reaches out to me, what I do now is I always ask them, how did you find me? Predominantly, it's through referrals because if someone's worked for me before, with me before and then they say, oh, you know, well, why don't you go to Jane? And that's where most of the calls come from. But then 
also I get people finding me via the podcast and they go, oh, Jane, I heard your podcast. You sound pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe you can help me too. Or else uh, a, a lady in Hong Kong um, just uh, two months ago reached out to me because she saw one of my YouTube videos. Oh, and right. so I ended up coaching her and I'm so excited because last week she emailed me and she said she got the job that she was trying to get um, over in Hong Kong. So that's great. Um, and then there was a woman in Singapore that I was working with as well just two months ago, who found me via Google. And so I love technology, Cynthia. <laughs> it's, it's that's, 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 that's really, really exciting. Mm. Uh, and, look, I, and I mentioned the fact that you were the first woman on the podcast for a couple of reasons, because I find that there are many fewer women doing business internationally. And so I'm very keen to showcase those women wherever I can find them. But I also want to talk a little bit about this idea that a lot of people have that uh, doing business internationally is somehow more difficult if you're female. And I'd like to know, have you found uh, operating internationally more difficult because you're a woman? A and uh, even if you haven't, do you think it's made any difference to how you do things? Mm, no, I, I don't like to think of, you know, like differences between us. Basically, I'm providing a service and depending on what your needs are, I, I will you know, provide the service to assist you with whatever, mainly it's careers, of course, um, or, or, you know, leadership development, whatever it might be. I focus on the individual. So I would say my clients are, I'd say they're 50-50, male, female, because yes. when you're going through transition or you want to improve your communication skills or you want to build your self-confidence, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, you'll still have similar uh, concerns. And yes. I, I tend to think of people more as individuals rather than, you know, I'm, I'm a woman, can I help you? I mean, some people yeah. might prefer to work with men with grey hair or they might <laughs> want to work with a woman with straight hair versus curly hair. I mean, <laughs> it yes. doesn't really matter. But, but I find, um, because I always like to have a conversation with uh, individuals who reach out to me, first of all, just to make sure that we have a rapport. And yes. if I think, oh, I think there might be a little bit of an issue here, I might not be the best coach uh, mm. for person then i'll refer them on to someone else so it doesn't actually matter whether they're male or female um i i don't worry whether i'm male or female there's not a lot i can do about it <laughs> there are some excellent uh male coaches that i i know and work very closely with as well but um basically we provide a service as long as we care about others and and help them to grow uh in their own careers and within themselves that's the most important thing to me so jane there will be some people listening to the podcast today who are thinking about expanding their business internationally and maybe they have doubts or they're wondering whether it's something that they can really do. What would you say to those people? Give it a go. Give it a go, basically. <laughs> Because really, I mean, unless you're going to be putting, you know, lots and lots of money into infrastructure and, and committing yourself to thousands and thousands of items of products or um, you, you've got, you know, some language barriers. I mean, if you do have a language barrier, get an interpreter. Um, if you're going to be going overseas and, and I'm, I, I don't work with manufacturers anymore. I used to, actually, because I ran a sideline business importing freshwater cultured pearls. This was my side hustle. Um, yes. And yeah, that was another small international business. I would source for suppliers in China. I would import. I would sell in Australia. But although I was based in Australia, people could order the products internationally as well. So, so it, was, it was quite interesting. But advice to anyone um, expanding internationally, I would say, as I mentioned before, find a mentor and don't be afraid to ask for help because there's so much that we don't know. And there are lots of little little. Oh, just just concerns and issues and and probably um, you know rules and regulations in different countries um, and you know the way that they tax or what are the customs and duties and whatever that might be that that is very different from country to country so you need to do your research so do your research ask for help and I would say you know definitely find a mentor who can guide you through it who's been there and done that before. Jane, it has been a real pleasure to have you on the podcast today. If people in Australia or abroad would like to get in touch with you, how can they reach you? 
Ah, you can find me via Google um, or else uh, find me on LinkedIn, Jane Jackson, career coach, you'll find me. My website is janejacksoncoach.com. And you know what? I would love to have them join me on my Facebook group because if you need a little bit of mentoring or someone to keep you accountable, if you go to um, facebook.com forward slash Jane Career Coach, there's a button that you can click to join my accountability group. So why not join that and introduce yourself and I will hold you accountable to achieve your goals. Jane, thank you so much. You're an inspiration. It's been great to have you on the show and I look forward to catching up with you again on this show in the future. Mm, Thanks so much, Cynthia. Lovely to talk to you and you're doing great things internationally too. So it's a pleasure. See you then. Hey everyone, if you're enjoying the Business Beyond Borders podcast and you're thinking about expanding your company internationally, you might want to check out the International Business Accelerator, which is something I created to help micro to medium sized businesses to speed up and de risk the process of internationalization. The International Business Accelerator, or as we like to call it, the IBA, is a program built on the three principles of skills and knowledge mentoring and accountability, and community. I built it especially for founders and CEOs who want to take their business to the next level and are wondering where to start. The program is structured in a way that's simple to follow. It's digital, so you can take part from anywhere in the world. It's a lot of fun, and our members love it. So if that's you, if you're thinking about going global, check it out at internationalbusinessaccelerator.com.